so good afternoon after everyone um, I'm gonna start here to talk about client as a front end so this talk a bit will be a bit different from the other talks so this is actually not changing Clang itself but actually using it uh, our agenda I'll just start by saying why do you need to find bugs a brief introduction to model checking ASBMC, the two that I'm working on, and the clean front end inside the ASBMC, and the future of SMT solvers. So, why do we need to find bugs? Uh, does anyone remember this case? Ariane 5 was launched in 1996 and exploded 40 seconds after launch. Does anyone know why they exploded? <laughs> what? Yeah, it was an exception thrown by a conversion to from a 64-bit flow to a 16-bit signed integer, and then they just lost the rocket. Uh, so, in 1996, also there is this case of USS Yorktown. They automated the, the whole battleship. And does anyone know why it stopped working? Why it break? Why it crashed? So. It was a really simple bug. It was a division by zero. And the whole battleship crashed and had to be towed back to the naval base. <laughs> so yeah, embarrassing, right? Uh, so we need to fix bugs. We cannot have those situations happening when you are commanding a battleship, right? Uh, so why it's formal methods? Formal methods something is a, a way to try to avoid that, to find bugs. What's the main standard today? It's testing your simulation. So you have a, a program, and you check a path on the, on the program. And you get an error on uh, AOK. -okay. So it checks paths on the program. Might miss, it may miss some errors, but that's OK. You can check. Since it's quick, it has small uh, memory requirements, time requirements. You can actually ch check a lot of times so you get a good coverage. On the other hand, model checking, it's an encoding. So you have the program in a specification of the program, uh, and you check all the passes. All the single uh, possible um, errors are checked by the model checking. And in the end, you have OK, no bugs, or uh, error trace. So you can actually see the, the set of assignments that lead to that, that bug. Uh, it, the problem is, since you are converting the whole program, it can be extremely resource hungry, so memory and time. Uh, we are working here at, at, at Universal Hampton with bounded model checking. So it's kind of a laser approach to model checking. We bound loops, array size, context switches. So we just keep increasing until we find a bug or we don't. Well, we just say we don't know. It's good to find bugs because usually, Bugs are really shallow in the program, so we don't have to iterate that much to find bugs. Uh, it can never prove that the program does not have bugs. So it will either say, there's a bug, or I don't know. And if you have infinite loops, it might be a problem, because you can never unroll all the possible, all the program to all the possible, re all the possible paths. So you might never be able to actually check all the possibilities. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, we see it stands for Efficient SMT Basic Context Bounded Model Checker. It's this, it's this architecture. I'm not going to go into details in each block, but basically, we get a source code, a C or C, we convert to a simple language called Go to, con go to Language. We basically remove switches, loops, and just make the program simple. We do a symbolic execution, which is go through all the paths in the code. We encode the constraint in properties of the code. So uh, properties are like um, if the, 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 the a variable is never 0 if it's a division, it's a division uh, this kind of stuff. And then we code it using uh, SMT. Right now, we support Z3, Bulletto, Matsat, CVC, and X. And well, this is the whole, whole process. And I'll focus on the Clank front end. Uh, 
Yes, BMC has all this built-in verification support. Uh, so for pointer safety, array, bound access, and division by zero enabled by default. But we also check overflows, memory leaks, deadlocks, data races. I'll show you a small example. Some small example. So <coughs> here are a few examples. Uh, don't mind. So don't mind the gaps in the program, they are there for a reason. Uh, so we just have a function, a full, and it does the division. And we want to check all the possible values of A that will trigger a bug in this program. So it's simple as, yes, we <coughs> see. So it will find a set of <laughs> assignments that will lead to a, a bug. You see these are uh, big numbers there. So we can actually do something like, OK, my program will never have this kind of input. For instance, my program will only have A ranging from 0 to 100. So we can write stuff like assume that A is between 0 and 100 and B is between 0 and 100. So this is example two. So it will try to find a, a proper evaluation that will trigger division by zero for, a, for the values of A inside this range. So you see if you use five and one, this will trigger division by zero here. Uh, this is using Bolecto, one of the solvers. You can actually check for using <coughs> other solvers. So that's really Matsat. So different assignments, but they always trick the, the division by zero. This assume is actually the same as if we write uh, an if. If this condition is not met, just return zero. So it's the same. Uh, so finally, the, this example three, let's say I'm do I don't want to check division by zero, right? Uh, you can either disable division by zero using the flag for the, for the two, or you just assume here so that C is never zero, and C is the equation for the division, right? So let's see, let's say uh, so no bug, right? But I mean you don't want to check for that bug, right? But let's say you want to check for overflow. You actually get a set of assignments for for overflow. You can check with all the solvers. That side as well. Crap. <laughs> Sorry. Right. So, yeah. So these are simple cases, but you can see they're really effective to find the, those bugs. We have actually the set of assignments that lead to that. So we, it's easier for the for the for the developer to see how he can reproduce it. Uh, Another program here with uh, concurrency. So it's basically a program with a deadlock. And we can check that as well. Yes, BMC <coughs> tries something very naive when it comes to, to check uh, concurrent programs. So by default, deadlock is not enabled. So, sorry. So it checks by default if the the MLOC return a no pointer. But with this flag, we can force it to always succeed. So by default, it doesn't check for deadlock. But if we add the deadlock check, it will eventually find a bug and give you the backtrace for the, for the set of assignments that lead to the backtrace, to, that, to the deadlock. Uh, yes, BMC is try to interleave all the possible points in the program. So if you have huge uh, concurrent programs, did, that will take a while to to verify. You try to interleave everything. A quick question: How does it reason to find the deadlock? Uh, just quick explanation. Okay, so we encode everything using SMT, and uh, it's complicated. 
we can talk later. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> okay. So these are simple examples of using SBMC and the Clank front-end, right? Why you are, we are moving to Clank front-end? So our old front-end was about 15 years old, so we didn't have support for a bunch of stuff. So for instance, compound, compound literals, stuff like this, uh, and well, I'm not a really good Bison developer, so I had no idea how to implement that. And we didn't have support for designated initializer stuff like this to initialize arrays. Uh, no support for type of operator. It was full of bugs, almost 30k locks. So every you single on your program. what you didn't pass your program on your program. Then you would find all the yeah, bugs. yeah. That's, let's talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> so every single change in the program is, it w I mean, it would lead to a lot of bugs and stuff. And it was hard, especially when I talk about C++. So uh, we tried to, our old front end tried to, to support C++ 98. There was hacks everywhere to support them. One of the problems is that we never really understood the, the rules for template instantiation because they are hard. They're, you're going to see that later. And it extends the C front end plus 35k logs. So yeah, we, we, don't, we don't want to maintain that because that's not, that's not the objective of the tool, the main aim of the tool. The tool needs to verify the problem. We don't want to maintain that. And then came Clang. Clang has a well-defined AST. Uh, so we just actually need to write a converter for the ST from Clang and two hours. New features, we just have to add a new conversion node. I will never have to program in Flex Bias anymore, so that's, that's alone is good. And we have a convenient function like evaluate as integers, ev evaluate as Boolean conditions inside the, the Clang that we can simplify a lot of the, of the ST for us. Uh, we have warning er in errors for a real compiler. So the same errors and warnings you get from the compilation you're going to have on, on the verification tool. And it's much smaller. So just the C <coughs> front end is about 4K locks and the C++ is about 7K locks. So much easier to, to support. The C++ front end is not released yet because we don't have any polymorph in. But I'll talk about that later. Uh, and there is another thing that Alone by itself, it's what it makes the the claim awesome, which is the AST contain all the instantiated templates. The AST contain all the instantiated templates. <laughs> Have I told you that the AST contain all the instantiated templates? <laughs> and I'll show I'll show you why this is so great. So I have here the standard. So <laughs> this is. The, probably the last standard before the release of the C++11 standard. So you see there the date. If we go to, to page 36A. So we are talking about explicit instantiation, right? So that's easy, right? Until we, so we have a lot of points, a lot of examples, until we get to, no, I'm not on the right one, where is it? So, sorry, explicit instantiation. So we get to the point number seven here. And I'll read for you guys. Uh, is it? Yeah. Sorry, here. So a placement of explicit instantia specialization declaration for function templates, class templates, member function of class templates, static that members of class templates, member class of class templates, member of class templates of class templates, member function templates of class templates, member function of member templates of cl class templates, member function of member templates of non template classes, member function templates of member class of class templates, etc. And the placement of the partial <laughs> specialization declaration of class templates member class templates of non-template classes, member class templates of class templates, etc., can affect whether a program is well formed according to the relative positioning of the explicit specialization declaration and their point of instantiations in the translation unit 
and specified above or below. <laughs> <laughs> when writing specialization, be careful about the location and make you compile will be such as River Kinder itself emulation. <laughs> so it's hard, right? <laughs> we don't have to deal with that anymore. Clever people done that for us on Clang, so we're just going to use that. They also removed this bit from C++ uh, 14. Really? Oh, that's much better there. Uh, so why move into Clang? Uh, we are using libtooling, because by the time we had tried to use the libclang, there were some functionalities. I think it's much better now, but since we started with that, we are not moving back again. Uh, most of the code it, to walk the S3 is based on the, the coding ST dumper, type printer, and the coding libcodegen. Uh, some lit limitations we found is C++, for instance, does not support implicit function declarations. So yes, BMC assume that I showed you guys we're not going to work by default. Uh, I'm still trying to work out how to fix that. Some random ca crashes. For instance, if you try to get a line number from a, from a translation unit into, in claim 3.6, it crashed, and, but it's fixed since then. Uh, Clang does not build the table for you, so at least not using the defined AST, so I'm going to have to write another converter for that. Uh, we have no access to the static analyzer. That would be excellent for us, since we're trying to verify the program, try to get some information about the, the reasoning of the, of the program. There are no op optimizations at AST level, which is that's, that's reasonable because all the optimizations are done at bytecode, at LVM, so we get small optimizations. And there are some lack of documentation, some corner cases. For instance, uh, let me show you guys this. So that's a uh, small example. We just have a class X, and we do a, a copy constructor, right? We call a copy constructor. And if we try to, to generate the, the AST for that. So briefly, this is the, Uh, three uh, variables, i zero, i one, i two, of the member function, the member str. So basically, what Clang is telling me here is that this is the copy constructor for this class, and I have no idea where this is coming from, and Clang does not tell me either. So. However, by the time you reach the code gen and the, when the bytecode is generated, just a, a, main, a, a main copy for the for that case in particular. But there is no 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 documentation for that. We just try to pass the AST when we see that, and there is no explanation why that is is like that. Right? I think there's just placeholders to generate yeah, the, some IR exactly that match to an end copy. Yeah. But the thing is, we are very careful when it comes to variables. And if there is a variable without declaration, we don't like it. So we just don't know what to do. So is there any difference between the declaration of those variables and the declaration of any other variable that you have in the context? Because if there isn't, then those could be real variables. And then yeah. global variables. And mm -hmm. you have no idea if yes, it's exactly. a real thing or it's just a made up. Exactly. Well, we, we don't have <coughs> any idea how to do that. OK. Uh, so just a bit future about SMT solvers. So why we don't check our base, our, our base code? Because SMT solvers are really resource hungry. We're talking about hund hundreds of gigabytes to, to formally verify how to. And this is, well, SMT solvers are evolving, but they, are still, they still need a long way to, to, to go. But what is the future for them? So going mainstream. So this is a series of patches by Dominique Chen. They are on the fabricator. Uh, 
they add Z3 to the constraint solver. Uh, the memory usage is about 20% higher, which is OK. However, the time to run is about 15 times higher. So that's something to improve. But we are getting there. With the Z3 uh, patches, we are able to finally reason about symbolic float ex expressions that this stack analyzer could not do <coughs> before that. It's not accepted to mainstream yet, but it's been under active discussions in the, on the fabricator. Uh, and that's it. Yes, WMC is open source. It's close development, however, for some reason. My, our developers are shy, I guess. <laughs> and please check the code. And any reason, just send me a, any question, just send me an email later. Thank you. <laughs> oh, any question? Uh, not really, not really. Not the question. Okay, uh, so he asked if there's any other limitation other than the table for the C++. Not really. We everything else it's 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 there. We just have to to parse it, actually. So even like uh, function pointers and things like that, you can follow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not on the AST, but. But wouldn't you have to track like all the things that could be theoretically loaded into that function pointer? Yes, this is done inside SBMC on, on a later step, not on the ST. So the ST is basically just to to convert that to our internal representation. So we don't have to pass the program, do any, any kind of type check. Okay, cool. <laughs> right? What language is SBMC implemented? So it's in C++. Uh, yeah, C++ 11, basically. So it wasn't No, no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, C plus plus. We have some kind of some Magpie developers. So Magpie is that that bird that likes to to steal shiny things. So every new shiny things, new features on C plus plus, we just like to implement that. So soon we're going to be moving to C plus plus fourteen. Okay. Uh, so he asked about what's the biggest program we checked. Uh, in terms of source code, about 10 megabytes of source code, which is small to medium, I guess. It really depends on the, on the program because a lot of stuff we can just throw away and not give it to the solver. We, can do some, we do some kind of static analysis on the program later on to remove unreachable path and that kind of stuff. So it really depends on the program, but so far about 10 megabytes of source code. Have you run it on your own program? Oh, what? Have you run it on your own program? On, on, the, on the tool? Uh, not really, because it's too big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Can you state the difference between this tool and CBMC? Using so, CBMC yeah, so yes, so YesBMC is a fork of CBMC. Okay. And CBMC is mostly about set solvers. It does have support for SMT solvers, but it's less than ideal. We are focused on SMT solvers. Yep. There are also other tools that are going to be for example. What is the advantage of using your tool versus Cli and what are the disadvantages? So uh, Cli, as far as I know, it tries to run the program and generate coverage, right? No, I think it's a, it's a composite. It's a, it's a symbolic execution as well. OK. So it tries to, to produce all the possible input for the program to cover all the possible parts. Mm -hmm. While you, as uh, I have seen, do some kind of forcing them to, to, to produce some <coughs> kind of parts. Yeah, we, we, so what's the difference between Clay and YesBMC? So we walk all the paths, or do the symbolic execution, and we do a bounded check, so you actually can Define how many loop iterations do you want to, to run, and we call SMT solve. I don't know if Clio uses a SMT solve. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, 
I would say the bounded model checking. It's the difference. You can bound the, the verification. Right? Uh, thanks for the talk. So your tool can verify deadlocks and stuff like that. So yeah. Can you also verify arbitrary things that you express using LTL or maybe something else? That yes. You can then how yeah. expressive is your Yeah, we have uh, a support for LTL. Uh, there is a paper we published four years ago, I guess, that defined all the, all the, the semantics for that. You just have to write in using LTL on the function calls, I, I guess. And, and you have CTL or MuCalculus? LTL only. Yeah. LTL only. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, how, how do you go about modeling uh, the system library? So when you're using Clang, you're getting in. Yeah, so. Yes, okay. So for C++, it's not a big deal because they provide the whole code. But for C, <laughs> stuff like string, printf, this kind of stuff, we have a, a model for that internally. Uh, it doesn't cover all the C libraries, but most of them are there. So handly, strings, chars, uh, files, everything is there. Floating points as well. Yes? Uh, because basically, by the time we were looking at the Clank, we thought that the SC will provide the most information we needed for the verification. So the CFG can come kind of optimized. Some branches can be cut, and we just w wanted the, the, the actual representation of the program, which is bad because the CFG code kind of generated the V table for you, right? Yeah. So. You yeah. You mentioned you mentioned the drawback in your thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thing. And also, sorry. Yes. Another place where you could have flagged yourself is that the LLVM literal. Like yes, there are. There is a tool that does that. It's called Smack. So it generate. It, it works from the bytecode and converts to a boogie language. I think that is and try to verify. Uh, yeah. The, the advantages of that is that you can verify much more language, not only C and C++, right? You're working at the LLVM bytecode. But since we are focused on C and C++, we decided just go with Clang. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>